Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I'm going to talk a little bit about these vintage blocks and I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean them before I put them in a quilt top. Okay, I want to show you these quilt blocks a little bit closer. Um, I had thought I'd just go ahead and put these in a top, put them together and then wash the quilt. But as I was playing around with these quilts, I started having all kinds of problems with my allergies. So I decided they were going to have to be cleaned before I do anything else with them. Let me turn them around this way for you. And um, these first two aren't too bad, but you can still see some staining on uh, these blocks. And now that they've been, I've had them pinned up to my design board for a couple of days and um, I'm not having as much trouble today with them, but I had decided that something was going to have to be done. I just am not going to uh, be able to quilt this top and stay healthy, um, especially with um, just having been through chemo and I'm not sure where my uh, immune system is standing right now. I really don't need to um, start having trouble with allergies and um, have it lead into pneumonia or something. So I'm going to head and clean going to go ahead and clean these. Now I don't I've never cleaned just blocks before. I've always finished the top and then um, cleaned the quilt. But um, and one of the reasons is because most of the time they are hand stitched together and I'm afraid they won't hold up. But these are machine stitched. Even though these are 1920s blocks they are machine stitched together so I'm hoping that will help them uh, hold together a little better. So I did go to my quilt store yesterday and asked them for their quilt soak. Now what they normally have or what I've bought from them in the past has been a powdered soap and they were all out of that but they had this here and this is just called quilt soap and it's by Quilters Rule. And so I'm going to try this. Um, I'm following the directions and uh, I'll show you how this goes as I take it step by step. And the first step is to warm the bottle to reliquify the contents because um, normally this is kind of a um, like a gel. But I'm going to warm this up for a few seconds in my microwave and then I'm going to shake it up uh, to help reliquify all the contents and get everything mixed up. <clears throat> and then uh, the directions are for using it in your washing machine or in a bathtub. So what I'm going to do though, since I just have blocks, is I'm going to use this little dish pan that I bought at the Dollar Tree store. And so I'm going to guesstimate on how much soap I need and uh, go from there. So give me a few seconds, I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to fill my tub with some water and then we'll go from there. Um, I just heated this up for about 10 seconds in the microwave and uh, that was enough to um, liquefy it and <clears throat> it had some sediment at the bottom and that's all gone now so um, I, think, I think I've got it all mixed up. Um, it says to use to fill your washer full of water and add only one tablespoon um, and then agitate the water slightly to mix the soap with the water. Um, since I have maybe half a gallon of water here, I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon of soap um, and see how that works because I can always wash these again if there's not enough. And this is a little foamy on the top probably from shaking it. So I'm just going to mix that in there. And I'm getting some bubbles so I think that's probably plenty. I'm going to recap this so I don't knock it off, knock it over and spill it all. Okay, and then gently place the quilt around in the washer and wash on gentle cycle for six to seven minutes only. Um, so I'm going to time this for probably seven minutes and, uh, then, uh, and then rinse the, the quilt twice, it says, to remove all the soap. Okay, so if the quilt is heavily soiled, wash it twice. Do not pre-soak the quilt, so don't soak it in anything else beforehand. 
Very delicate antique quilts should be handled gently and washed or soaked in a bathtub filled with water using one tablespoon of quilt soap. Okay, um, these are antique blocks, but I'm not going to put this in the bathtub. This is this is my bathtub here, and I'm just doing the quarter teaspoon. Um, and if you do this in your bathtub, it says to fan fold your quilt and gently hand press up and down on the quilt, forcing clean cleaning water through the layered quilt. Drain the water, hand press up and down to squeeze out excess dirty water and rinse the quilt several times to remove all the quilt soap and dirty water. Press to squeeze out the excess water. Now you probably know that, but with any quilt, um, you don't want to wring it. You don't want to take it and wring it like like you would anything else, like a towel, you would wring it to get the extra water out. You don't want to do that to a quilt. That can damage your fibers and your, and your thread in there. Um, so you just squeeze it. And then place a sheet under the wet quilt and lift it out of the tub using the sheet. Do not lift heavy wet quilt manually. Um, I'm not sure how she would lift it. I don't have a any, any way to do that, but anyway. Okay, I'm going to put these in. I'm going to put them in one at a time. And my water, it doesn't say what temperature water to use, but um, just common sense tells you not to use hot water. So this is just cool water. It's not cold. It's not, it's cooler than room temperature. So it's cool enough that my hands aren't freezing and Um, it's comfortable for me, but it's not, it's not warm, it's just cool. So I'm just going to press each one of these down. Now the last quilt that I washed, I let, it, I, it, it was the, a different detergent and it, uh, I let it wash, sit in the soak overnight because it was really, really dirty. And it did. It got most of everything out. Um, and so I only had to do it once. And um, I can't, I don't remember the name of that. It came in a floral fabric bag. And uh, it was really good stuff. So we'll see how well this works. This one you only have to do for six to seven minutes. So this may be better. I don't know. We'll find out. And the last block. Okay. So we're just going to. You can already see the water is getting dirty. I don't know if you can tell. But that water is is already turning kind of yellow. So it's getting stuff out already. So I'm just going to gently swish these back and forth and just watch my clock and I'm just doing this on my dining room table I have a um, washing tub uh, a wash tub in my basement but um, I use that for when I'm painting cleaning out paint brushes and paint pans and that kind of thing so uh, I wouldn't put a quilt in there anyway. I would always, I would set this in there, but my air conditioner is running again, so um, it's noisy down there. So we're gonna do this on the dining room table. Okay, I'm gonna keep this up for looks like another six minutes, and uh, I'll come back and show you where we're at. Okay, um, seven minutes are up, and uh, this is what I've got. Oh, you can see this. You can see how yellow that water is. It's just really, it's almost brown looking. Um, so I got a lot of dirt out of these blocks. Now halfway through the process, I redistributed these blocks so that the ones that are in the very center, I switched to the top and the bottom so that uh, they would get the full effect of all the detergent. So next thing I'm going to do is going to uh, drain this water and I'm going to rinse the blocks 
Um, so to rinse them twice, I'm going to do it twice and then I will show you the finished results. Okay, I'm going to show you what I got. Um, this is the second rinse water. And this is probably was one of my worst blocks. It is cleaner, but there's still some stains that I want to try and get out, especially like in this corner here. Um, if you can see that. Um, so I'm going to do this again, and uh, we'll see if it gets any cleaner. Um, you know, they may not come out. Um, that's part of the mystery of vintage quilts. You don't know what's causing the stains. Uh, a lot of times it's water or moisture of some kind, uh, condensation, you know, however they're stored. Um, but I'm going to do this one more time and uh, then I'll show you the results from that. Okay, I got them all rinsed out and I um, wanted to show you the results. Um, that second soap really didn't do anything different. I think everything came out that first time. Here is the, the block that uh, had the stain on the corner, which is right here. You see that it's still there. Um, and there's some staining over here yet. But um, I don't know. We'll just uh, kind of go with it. Uh, one thing I did notice that even though these are um, machine stitched, this is probably 100% cotton thread. And, and they that thread, even though it was cold water, this block has shrunk up a little bit. You can see in the seams it's a little bit puckered. So I'm going to uh, kind of block these, I think. Um, just gently stretch along those seams to get this block back into shape. And I don't think I'm going to pin them down because I don't want to uh, um, poke holes in it and uh, possibly leave rust marks on it. Um, these were pinned together up here with a, a bobby pin and that bobby pin left some rust marks on all, every one of these blocks. So. Um, I don't want to uh, be pinning these down. But that's kind of the um, danger of, of uh, washing vintage blocks. Even though these fabrics have been worn and they've probably been washed multiple times, the thread hasn't. And it's probably 100% cotton thread and it may shrink. So um, that block is one that... Um, See, it's, I've got it back into shape pretty well right now. But I will, I think I will press these when they're just a little bit damp and kind of coax those back into shape. And I'm going to see another one here. And I'm putting these on a white tea towel so that you can see the color. There's another one that has staining on it in several places that did not come out. And I've had that even with the other quilt soak. Uh, sometimes the stains don't all come out, and that's 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 just kind of the way they are. Um, and that doesn't bother me. Um, what bothers me the most is the dirt that's in there. And um, as it as you're working with the quilt, put sewing it together and quilting it, how it affects your health. So that's uh, was my main concern there. And um, so. This one didn't shrink up as much. I don't know why, but it seems to be okay. And here's another one. And there's 12 of these blocks. And they, there was some fraying though. Even though I just um, gently agitated them, they still did fray a little bit. But the, the, the uh, seams seem to be fine. They're not wanting to unravel, so that's that's a good good thing. There we go. Okay, so those are the results of the quilt soap. Um, you can get this online at uh, quiltersrule.com. There's a, the web address is here. Uh, I believe online it sells for two dollars and ninety nine cents. It's, it's not very expensive. Uh, I bought this at the quilt shop so I spent considerably more for it. But then you have to consider that I also didn't have to pay shipping. So 
if you go to Quilters Ruler and you want to buy this, um, you know, pick up a couple other items to make it worth your money, that's great. But if, like with me, I was at the quilt shop and I also want to pick up some fabric and I'll, I'll show you that. It's for another project. I'll show you that at another time. And so I picked it up there. Um, saved me. I probably didn't spend any more for this than if I had a, ordered it online. But, you know, you know what the shipping will cost you, so go... Go, go check it out. Um, check out your local quilt shop and see if they have a quilt soap of some kind. If not, you can get this online. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention. How am I going to dry these? I'm not going to throw them in the dryer. I'm going to just lay them out on this towel and let them air dry flat. And then I'll press them with the iron. So I'm just going to fiddle with these and get them as flat as I can and uh, get out a couple more towels. These tea towels are just muslin tea towels and um, they're 100% cotton. I've got several of these that I bought years and years ago. I was planning on embroidering, hand embroidering things on them and uh, got several of them that I never did get around to doing that. So. I use them for drying dishes and drying quilt blocks. So I'm just going to spread this out and just lay these quilt blocks out and let them dry. And if you've got um, a way to get air underneath them, like if you have uh, cooling racks like we use for cookie sheets, put those out and lay this on top, which I think I'm going to do before I get much further. And that way the air can get underneath and they can dry faster. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.